Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game Changers audio experience with myself, Adam Strong. And today we have another great show lined up for you guys. I'm super pumped and super excited about today's conversation. And, you know, um, it's interesting because over the last few shows, there has been a regular, a regular theme. And um, and I'm sure that you've begun to pick up some of the uh, some of the themes from some of the previous shows. If you haven't, please make sure that you do go back to some of the previous shows and you'll probably be able to pick it up as we go along and stuff. But listen, today's guest, uh, an absolute superstar, really looking forward to some of our conversations. Uh, I've known this particular gentleman, actually, for quite a number of years. And um, and his name is Jeff Klubeck. And Jeff is uh, from uh, from the US, of course, based in San Diego, California. He is a business coach, but he's also his area of expertise actually lies in organizational um, development. And um, and he's worked with uh, well, he actually created some of the um, what, what was going to say some of the talent recruitment frameworks for, you know, companies like JP Morgan, um, some of the pharmaceutical companies and uh, uh, State Farm, some of the, you know some of the well-known brands out there. Uh, but also, Jeff is a motivational speaker. He's spoken around the world. Uh, we've uh, hanged out quite a few times. I think the last time that me and Jeff uh, hanged out was probably a good three years ago. Actually, we we was uh, he was actually teaching at a retreat that we uh, that me and a good friend of ours, a uh, good mutual friend of ours, that was hosting in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, just outside Atlanta, actually, it was in Georgia. But it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and it was just such a, a whirlwind of a whirlwind of a time. And um, and also Jeff is also an up and coming author. We're going to be talking a little bit about um, the integrity game, which is uh, his new up and coming book, which we can have a chat to him about. So today, what, what are we actually going to be talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a topic which is extremely important, not only from a currency perspective, but it's important, especially as we go into the new year. And as we cont continue to evolve as human beings, which is integrity. So we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, integrity. We're going to be talking about in the integrity game. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about, because uh, one thing that really drives me insane, right, is the really kind of the differences between, um, I suppose, in ethic, eth ethical selling and integrity. So selling within, uh, with, eth uh, with ethics, or with integrity, and what do you guys need to look for as well in terms of, you know, if someone is, uh, if you're on an event, for example, and someone is selling with um, integrity versus using manipulation to get what they want, and some of the things that you're gonna, we're going to be uh, sharing. So we're going to be we're going to be ruffling roughing some feathers tonight for some of you uh, people out there. But you know me, if you which you know me and you listen to this show regularly, you know that I like to ruffle some feathers. <laughs> but anyway, listen, without further ado, put your hands together for Mr. Jeff Klubeck. Oh, hey, thank you, Adam. All right. And let me apologize if there's some echo in the room. I want you to know I had to get out of the home office with the cleaning lady and the contractors <laughs> and the dogs. It's so all good. It's I've, all I've gotten good. to the, the, this is the local business club golf course where I was able to get a Ooh. private room, but there's a little bit of echo in here. But That's thank you cool. for having me on and thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I want to say it takes one to know one when you said absolute superstar. How would you know unless you are one yourself? So I, I have to start off and say it's a treat to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I love uh, the preface about ruffling feathers, even if I might have to role play that with you and you can be yeah. the, you know, the icon of the feather ruffling. Because uh, when we talk about integrity, we're going to start with the common understandings, which I think you alluded to. But, but this is a game changer's experience. So I really hope that I can change the game mm -hmm. that people Absolutely. are playing when it comes to integrity. But I'll, I'll just be led by your questions. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. All good. All good. Listen, guys, if you are listening to us live, 
if you do have any questions or you want to make any comments, do so by making any comments on the comment section below. Uh, if we are you, if you are listening to us live, welcome. We're going to be streaming. We're streaming through YouTube, LinkedIn Live, and also on our Twitter channels as well. And if you're listening to the pre-recording of this show as well, and you're listening to this on the Game Changers Experience on all of our good channel uh, podcast channels, Apple, Podchaser, Amazon Music, all of those wonderful channels. If you're listening to us and you have any uh, direct uh, direct questions, then you can directly uh, message us on the show or you can message Jeff and you can check his uh, uh, links out on the message below. So, uh, so listen, that's all the formalities out the way. Let's get into the nooks and crannies of today's show because interestingly enough, you know, um, we were actually <laughs> over the last couple of weeks, Jeff, right? We've been talking a lot about integrity. Mm -hmm. And I think it is, you know, Lisa Johnson, who's a really good friend of mine now, um, who's a seven figure business strategist. And she said, which, which I think is actually really true, is that integrity is the new currency of today's business world. What's your, what's your take on that? Oh my God. From her mouth to God's ears. Um, <laughs> I, I really, I, and, and I, yeah, just it's what a relief because you know, let's just start globally, right? Right. I'm going to feedback on this. Integrity is usually to be funny about it, like parenting or driving. Mm -hmm. It's one of these things that everybody thinks themselves to be really good at. It's just everybody else that sucks at it. <laughs> yeah, true. So normal. Thank you for laughing. Normally, when people use the word integrity, they are either accusing somebody else of not having it. Or lying to themselves about having it. Absolute denial, one hundred percent. Yeah. So absolutely. if we can, if we can frame integrity as a currency, what a refreshing, what a breath of fresh air mm -hmm. uh, as something to be earned, something to be protected, something to be redistributed. Uh, mm -hmm. What a beautiful way of looking at integrity. And, 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 and following your questions, hopefully, I can show you my perspectives but i love that i love looking at integrity as currency because most people know that all of the problems in the world are essentially when things are out of integrity but who is teaching integrity who is up leveling integrity who is calling out the integrity and confronting out of integrities who understands integrity fully enough to do something about it other than just blame people for not having it yeah, one hundred percent. I think that's a a good point you make there as well. And you know, and, and I mean, us being you know worldwide speakers, you know, I mean, we've seen a lot that's going on in the personal development world, and and things don't change. But listen, that's a whole new can of worms that we're going to open up. But yeah, listen, well, and... <laughs> I <laughs> right there, but... <laughs> but anyway, it's all good. Listen, yeah. uh, let's get let's let's really get into the the uh, the nooks and crannies of this conversation because sure. I wanted to I wanted to um, ask you. Um, because I know that you've got your new book coming out, which which we'll talk about later. But I want to talk a little bit about something which which uh, uh, was highlighted to uh, some of our dialogue off air, which was a mind bend. Mm -hmm. Now, tell tell us a little bit yeah. about mind. I'd never heard of that terminology before. Tell mm -hmm. us about what a mind bend is and how how does that apply to integrity? Well, first of all, I, let me try to be quick about this. I heard right. the word mind bend. I've heard it before, but the last time I heard it was in response to my keynote for the integrity game. Huh. So there was a very high ranking senior, senior, senior leader, uh, uh, regional for United Healthcare. I'm gonna plug the organization. He's very into personal professional growth and I did an integrity game workshop for one of his high performance teams here, right? But the uh -huh. workshop, it starts with me delivering the keynote for 30 to 40 minutes interactive and then we work on one of the points in the keynote. So I'm probably going to show that 10 point model to you. Got but it. before I get into the 10 point model, this was his feedback. He's like, Jeff, I thought I knew what integrity was and you gave me a complete mind bend on it. <laughs> right. And, and, and I think that he's referring specifically to something that I can take you through in a minute or so. Would you yeah. like to? All right. So can you yeah, work it? We can definitely do that, 100%. Absolutely. Right. So watch. Imagine imagine with me now and all of the audience and all of the listeners, imagine you're in the room and I'm doing a public talk, okay? Right. And yep. I'll say, right, and imagine what's going to happen, right? If I ask, how many of you, <laughs> ready? <laughs> how many of you believe you have integrity? 
How, what percentage of the room will raise their hand? Probably about 99.9%. Yeah, 100, <laughs> you mean, right? So, then, so now, so do it right, right? Like pretend you're going to represent 100 on it. So every, oh, <laughs> right? all right, now hang on. Now here it goes. Keep your hand up, keep your hand up and, and repeat after me. Ready? I, I do, I do, solemnly do. swear. Solemnly swear. Not to shoot the messenger at the end not of this talk. Not to shoot the messenger right. at the end of this talk. All right. So now, basically, I'm going to ask you guys again, 30, 45 minutes, if you have integrity, we'll see how many hands go up and if they go up as quickly. <laughs> now, thank you for laughing. Now, what a bold, audacious claim. What a feather ruffling, ruffling thing to say. So I right. back off, right? And I say, well, hang on a second. Who am I to suggest that you have no integrity or that you're out of integrity or that you don't have integrity? Let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. Right. Ready, ready, Adam? Yep. So now I say, what is integrity? And now, you know, in a room, like the rooms we've been in, people are going to say, so why don't you role play this? Watch what happens here. If I'm right about this, watch what happens. I'm going to get two answers. And the okay. answers I'm going to get are predictable. Ready? Go ahead, okay. Adam. What is integrity in your opinion? Uh, integrity to me is, uh, uh, is uh, doing what you say that you're going to do. Okay, I'm going to hang on to that and I'm going to pin that on the board because we're going to come back to that. You're one for one. <laughs> and somebody else, I say, anybody else want to uh, let, help us get to the definition? And somebody will say, when you say you're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> it, it, okay we're, it's still the same thing. Do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, what's up? If there was a second way of understanding integrity, what do you think somebody in the audience is going to say? I'm going to say, hey, we'll pin that on the board because we're going to work with it. But what else? What, who else has an understanding of integrity? What do you think a second answer might be? Second answer might be something like... Uh... Uh, integrity is is behaving in a in a particular way that is I don't know um, acceptable to society. Aha, uh -huh, you're close. You talked about behavior, right? So here's right. what most here's what I get a lot when I do this, right? Got it. Doing this, ready? Tell me if this sounds familiar, and anybody watching will see your face and they'll know. <laughs> Doing the same thing when nobody's watching that you would do when somebody's watching. Interesting. Aha, you, right? You hear the pause there. So right. we haven't fully bent your mind yet. I'm getting to that. Watch. Here, we do the same, you know, people have said, if you do the same thing when nobody's watching that you do when somebody is watching, then that's integrity. So we're going to pin that on the board. We're going to use that too. So here's what we love about those two answers. And, I'll, and by the way, I'll ask. I'll say, does anybody else have another answer or are those the two? Sure. And then you know there's going to be an extrovert and alpha that thinks, that, <laughs> and they're going to say they're going to say something poetic and flowery and bold. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say, hey, thank you. I love that enthusiasm. I love that you're engaged. And that's just another way of saying one of these two things, right? You go, oh yeah, I guess so. But hey, you're engaged, right? And then people basically realize, all right, those are the two answers we're going to work with. But yep. here's what I'm here's the mind bend part. Ready, Adam? And we'll get to Got the next it. question. Got it. On the one hand, doing what you say you're going to do, Adam, you're integrating your word with your behavior. On this side, when we behave the same way we would when nobody is watching than when somebody is watching, we're right. integrating our values, our morals, or our ethics Got it. with the behavior. So watch this. And I hope this is quotable, what I call a kluby snack. <laughs> in, in both instances, here's the kluby snack. Evi uh, behavior is the evidence of our integrity. It's it. not what we say, it is what we do. So I love these answers for that reason. Does that make sense? Be Absolutely. I'll say it again, behavior is the evidence. But here's the mind bend part. Adam, I could ask a million people, what's the definition of integrity? And all 1 million people will say, do what you say you're gonna do or do the same thing when nobody's watching. But you know what nobody will say? It's the coming together of one thing with another. It's mm -hmm. integration. Got it's it. amazing that the letters I N T E G R are <laughs> both start both words integrity and integration. But if I asked a million people what's integrity, not one of those million people would use the word integration in their definition. They would say, "Do be your word." Do is that's the mind bend part. So to me, we say something has integrity when one thing has come together with another. Got it. Like yin and yang, like sun and you know, lightness and darkness, like male and female, like proton and electron, like like heads and tails, like up yep. and down, like in and out. Like I see the world as a gazillion things that are really just two things that have come together. So what you're saying is integrity is like 
a coming together of two entities. Yeah, well, it starts there. I want that. I want to add that the notion of integration, the coming together, right? Because what that's you said it. The world needs. We all need to come together. Okay. So okay. So here's a thought process then. Yeah. How different is integrity to say collaboration? Collaboration is a form of integrity. Okay. Right. And so right. like now you're talking about well, is it collaboration or effective collaboration? Because we've all been parts of collaborations that collaborated to drive each other crazy and agree not to move forward anymore. <laughs> and then True. of course we've been a part of collaborations where the contributions were beautifully integrated into a unified effort of the collective. Got it. Makes we've sense. We've been in collaborations where it's my way or the highway, and everybody else better do it my way or else it's done. We, right. <laughs> On that's, and on. Not, that's not an interrogation. <laughs> no, not at all. So, Absolutely so, not. so back to these two things, but let me ask you another question, Adam. If I said I was going to drink 18 beers before your podcast today, and then I drank 18 beers before uh -huh. your podcast today, would I be able to claim I had integrity? Um, you see, hold that look on your face. Like, wait, I would have done what I said I was going to do. Now, you know, you can't answer yes to that because you know, there's something else that I'm not integrating with if I drink 18 beers before a podcast. But I and, think that, I, I think that it, uh, to be um, integrated or, I mean, there's a, again, it's, it's like you mentioned around the whole kind of behavior thing, right? Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes, you could say that I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to turn up on time, but then I'm kind of drunk. Right. But that's not me. That's, that's not really. That's, 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 hey, first of all, that's if 18 beers gets me drunk. I don't know what your <laughs> exactly. tolerance is. But no, the, no, the idea, and this is what I'm getting at. At word with behavior isn't enough. If I right. said I was going to drive my car into the first three children I saw on the road and then I did it, would I be able to claim I had integrity? Mm. Good point. It, right now, the other side of it is that's the mind bend. Now, the other side of it is. Well, there's things that I do in private, like bathe or, you know, bathe in self-romance or, you know, to, to ruffle some feathers or I pick my nose or I cut my <laughs> fingernails. Should I do that in public? Right. That, that, that's true. I mean, but again, it's uh, it's but now we're kind of going down the, the road of, um, you know, what uh, uh, perceptional reality is to what society deems us in terms of behavior. What I'm trying, true, and what I'm trying to set up is I'm trying to get, imagine the audience now. I'm right. trying to build up to how many of you want to know what else I think we need to integrate in order to claim more integrity. So I'm, I'm, I'm setting up, like just word with behavior and just behavior with ethics in my book is not enough. I have a 10 point model of things we want to integrate. That when we're playing the integrity game, it's our effort to have answers to 10 sets of questions. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. And, and word with behavior and behavior with values or morals or ethics is part of it. But it's 20 percent of my model. And I suppose things like trust, for example, is a result of leading with integrity. Right. It's a it's a it's an end result. Would you say it's an end result? Yeah. I, your values themselves are not they don't have a point on the model, but values are the adhesive. The, the values hold it together, the, the glue, the adhesive for the 10 points. Um, an, an analogy I use for that is laces. Right, right, laces. right. That so, makes sense. so like, check, you know, a building, Adam, a building is said to have structural integrity if what? What it has structural integrity if it has the right materials, components, or the- The right in order to what? In order to, in order for it to be a complete package, in order for it to be safe. When a com, what in a complete package means what? It has structural integrity as a complete package. If what? If if it says what it what is deemed to do, right? Deemed, despite the outside influences, exactly. When the wind comes, when the earth shakes, when the lightning comes, if there's a fire inside, the sprinklers come on. So, yep. in other words, we say something has structural integrity. If it does what it was built to do, yes, despite outside forces. So let me ask, why waste a good pandemic? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure that we're going to have some. Uh... By the way, this isn't a pandemic show. I just wanted to let you know. But well, that... <laughs> you know, no, but, but my point is, like, here's what I'm getting at. Remember, in the beginning, everybody raised their hand 
when they said they had right. integrity. And then when right. I go through the 10 point model, people go, oh, God, I could do a better job here. And <laughs> I may take you through the 10 point model today based on your questions. But my point is, first of all, that's the mind bend. That Got number it. one, I'm talking about integration, the coming together of one thing with another. And so somebody says they have integrity. Well, all they've done is said they have it. But if they behave different, they're actually out of integrity. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And we'll we'll actually touch base about the the ten points um, in a second. Okay. Now I want to I wanted to um, kind of you know I mean most of our listeners are entrepreneurs and business owners as okay. as you know and stuff. And I want to really kind of really touch base on the underestimation of the importance of using integrity in business because I think that there is this maybe this false perception or this false reality that integrity isn't really as important as money. You know what I mean? So, and I, I mean, we, we could have this conversation for a long time, but I can tell you now that especially with those startup companies mm -hmm. and they're probably thinking, well, you know, I need to get those sales in. I need to get this thing working, baby. You know, and maybe morals, ethics, and integrity is kind of slipped to the side. What's your take on this? Um, I think that, that there's the integrity sounds vague to people. Right. Okay. And I think most of the people inside, you know, like when I say, Hey, how many of you think you have integrity? What people hear is how many of you believe you're a good person? <laughs> and everybody's going to say yes. And so people think it's vague. It's a wishy-washy term or vague. It's not concrete, you know? Um, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to do is change the game. I'm trying to make it more of a concrete model rather than a value or a vagary or an adjective. I want it to be a noun. <laughs> I Love want it, it to be, I want it to be a verb. Yep. You know, like integrity isn't something we have. It's something we do. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And so now in organizations, look, the, the, if you peel enough layers of the onion, you're going to get to one of these things that says, who am I to decide? I'm not here to decide what integrity is for somebody else. What I am here to do is guide people on answering 10 sets of questions so that they can hold themselves accountable to their own answers. Love it. But then see it more clearly. Or, you know, but the idea is people, there's questions, very important questions that people aren't answering, but running around claiming they have integrity, but they don't have answers to the important questions that I, I think are game changing in my model. Yep. And I, I think I think you may make an important point there, because there's one thing. I mean, we talked about values a little bit, you know, and we all know that values are not what you say is what you do. Similar mm -hmm. to integrity. Right. Because it, it, integrity is in a, in essence, it is a value of 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 who you are as a person, isn't it? Um, it integrity. Yeah. The, 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 part of it is trick question. You follow part of it's trick question. When I asked how many of you believe you have integrity? The trick question there is the truth is we all do. But would you think that the problem is we all need more? Well, of course. I, yeah. I, but then I guess how do you then quantify one that needs more something when you've got no basis to work from? Yeah. If that how, makes sense. How, yeah. How do I do it? Yeah. Okay. Me. How do I do it? Absolutely. I, I hold my clients, whether it's an individual, a high performance team, or an organization. I guide them on a journey with accountability to having answers to the 10 question sets that make Got up it. the model. Okay, and enough so, of this. You, enough of this. We need to get into the 10 questions, guys, because you're probably thinking, <laughs> why does he answer the goddamn 10 questions? God damn it. <laughs> well, well, you know, this buildup is always fun, but but my Absolutely. Point is, you asked the question, how do I quantify it? And it's not like, you know, let me say this. Let me say this before we move forward. Right. Uh, integrity is no different than, let's say, uh, emotional intelligence or mm -hmm. um, let me think of a couple of civility in the workplace or a customer. Like basically, I have a library of 100 soft skill trainings. Yep. Be a likable boss, train the trainer, personal branding, um, managing the manager, uh, you know, whatever, you know, like all these soft skills. Well, the bean counters, no offense, because their job's important, bean counters <laughs> that are looking at bottom lines and shareholder and numbers and profits, 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 they don't understand necessarily the impact on bottom line that soft skills can have. So I'll say this again, if anybody wants to write it down, there's something, this is a way that I'd like to be known. My name is Jeff Klubeck. I believe soft skills make strong leaders. I believe soft skills make strong teams. I believe soft skills make strong organizations. 
because most of the problems in the wasted time, the water cooler conversations, the poorly run meetings, the politics, the backstabbing, the infighting, the one upsmanship, the stealing of ideas, the crap that rolls downhill, the covering your butt, uh, the people that are dragged to meetings just to be caught into some dramatic propaganda that they don't even understand. All of that stuff, it's all soft skill. Yep. I agree. And you know, and it, all and you kill, know and it all kills bottom lines and the people in the bean counters that aren't emotionally involved, they're analyticals and they're just looking at numbers and spreadsheets. They're yeah. not at the water cooler realizing the loss in productivity. Now, some organizations are smart and they figure it out and they measure it. What's the cost of one bad hire? What's the cost of one bad meeting? And there you could get to metrics for the impact on bottom line for poor soft skills, but most people ignore it and integrity falls into that category, in my opinion. Well, it's like a, it's kind of like having a poison apple which causes toxicity, of course, which then probably drives pop, you know, and I know that the Gallup has done lots of surveys on engagement and so forth. And I mean, there's lots of different stuff, but I guess what they, a lot of surveys don't really kind of take into consideration is where has it all come from? What's the source? Where's the root cause? Does that make sense? Root cause of? Root cause of like, you know, let engagement, if it's toxic or, you know, they don't really look at the whole picture in terms of the cultural side of stuff. They just look at, a, 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 you know, a, a, an integrity and a, a specific part. So whether it be... Uh, they, they, uh, they, they, yeah, they, or they look at soft skills, transact, I'll say this, they look at transaction instead of transformationally. Absolutely. 100%. So I, I'm looking for leaders that want to make investments in their organization, individuals and teams that includes soft skills and the transformational side. You follow? Got it. But here's yeah. the thing. Who am I to judge? Look, if somebody comes in and says, Jeff, the purpose of my business is to make money. Everything else is secondary, including <laughs> people's feelings, people's emotions, people's careers, uh, and customer satisfaction. None of that matters to us. It all matters, but not as much as profits. So every decision we make is going to be for the bottom line of the company. And then they do. They're in integrity. <laughs> but if they say our number one thing is to solve our customers' problems and to make them happy and to be the number one place to work, and then they cut off benefits and da, 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 then then they're out of integrity. So it's not me to decide mm -hmm. what people's ultimate purpose is. It's my job to get them to answer the question, and now I can hold them accountable to living it or not. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting how I see so many leaders become hypocrites of what they actually say and what they do. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've come across many, many organizations, small and big, that say something, but actually don't actually hit the market. Or fail to say something. Right. And then once the investment is made, then they say, oh, right. But if you would have said it up front, <laughs> people might not have made that investment. And, and we can get into, you know, examples that we're both familiar with. But the, the point that I'm trying to make here is it's not for the seminar industry specifically. It's any organization. It could be a volunteer organization. It could be little league baseball, Adam. You follow? True. If somebody Absolutely. says, hey, I'm volunteering because I want to help the kids, and all they do is manipulate the rules so their son can play a position that they're not good enough to play, they're out of integrity. And then you call Absolutely. them out on it. and you, you know. So here's the other thing that's a really important point to make. And, and I'm, this isn't good. I don't want to do a tangent, but I'm going to say this. People do use the same accountability the same way they use integrity. They say, oh, no accountability. Or, that person needs accountability or no accountability or where's the accountability? But I can tell you, guarantee you right now, nobody knows how to teach accountability. Mm. Nobody could demonstrate for themselves how and why they're accountable, who's holding them accountable, how accountability gets delivered to them, or if they were going to hold somebody accountable right now, how would they do it? How do you confront somebody powerfully and gracefully? So guess what? There's a gazillion people in all of our lives that see us out of integrity, but aren't trained or aren't compensated or aren't skilled or don't care enough to confront us and hold us accountable. And just because somebody says, hey, you said you'd be here there at, at 12 o'clock and you didn't get there till 1215. Just because they don't say anything doesn't mean they didn't observe it. And now that right. colors their perception of you. So there's a lot of people out there that see that you're out of integrity, but aren't saying anything to you about it. They're letting you walk around broccoli in your teeth. And I, I won't let anybody in my orbit walk around with broccoli in the teeth. So I had to get very skilled on getting permission to let people know when there's broccoli in their teeth. You know, you know, this is why I love conversations with you, Jeff, because, you know, you are f from my perspective. Right. I don't know. about. I, I don't know. I, I know that some of you guys, this is the first time that you're listening to Jeff. I've yeah. known Jeff for, for quite some time. And the thing is, is that, you know, he really likes to disrupt the game when it comes to uh, really kind of honing down on a particular topic. 
And, you know, I mean, you can tell how passionate he is about it because he's got the experience to go with it. And out of pure frustration, a bit like myself, really, um, you can really see that, uh, you, you know, there's, I suppose, there's one thing that I really like to call out, which is bullshit, right? I mean, there's just <laughs> so much bullshit out there, right? But anyway, listen, I want to get into this, guys. So if before, I want to give a quick reset, because if you are listening in live, do make yeah. a comment. Uh, do make any comments or questions and feel free to do that. Uh, we're streaming through YouTube, LinkedIn Live and uh, on Twitter as well. But also, guys, if you're listening to the pre-recording and you have any questions for Jeff, please do connect with him on his on his channels below, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, whichever you prefer I'm, channel. I'm is. easy to find. You can exactly. Feed, he's easy to find. He's it's not it's not it's not that difficult. Trust me. And and just mention the, the podcast, of course. So yeah, I, Jeff, I'm I'm no secret. <laughs> definitely no secret listen i want to get into these 10 points are yeah. you able to share are you able to share what these 10 points are yeah yeah i i would if you don't mind i'd like to share my screen is that okay and i know Absolutely. some people are listening on audio and you just have to use your imagination but that's one of the things and i, I i've got it i think i've figured out how to do this okay? you got that okay then tell me if this is working right Go for it yeah tell me can you see my screen now can you see it nope Oh, I can. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me add this to the stream. Okay, great. There we go. All right. So I got you to this part with your questions already. This is a, like a, a PowerPoint that represents when I do keynotes, yep. right? Or, or the front end of integrity game workshops that I provide for organizations. So remember I said, how many of you believe you have integrity? Well, wait a second. Slow down. What is integrity? We already covered that. And I said, building a structural integrity if. Well, next, for your listeners, imagine a tennis shoe. Right. Imagine the laces of a tennis shoe, of a sneaker. And right. Adam, I want you to understand, we see these laces. This is the a metaphor for values. I'm honest. I'm compassionate. I believe in transparency or whatever my values are. These are the laces. OK. Yeah. But what do we do? We put a lace. We put the lace through one hole and then we do a cross. And then we go diagonal, 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 diagonal. Right. You follow and we go back up to the top and we lace up the other side. So the laces, what are they doing? The laces, I'm going to slow down. The laces are not tying our shoe. They are integrating the right. left side with the right side. So do you see this visual now of these laces? Absolutely. Good analogy. I love it. You follow? So yeah. now these laces that you can see are the values that hold everything together. But let me tell you the 10 things that I believe we want to establish and, and bring closer together. Now the laces, they don't make the left side of the shoe with the right side of the shoe overlap or replace each other or substitute for one another. And they don't even necessarily touch. It just, it just brings them closer together. Why? So the shoe can do what it was supposed to do, which is stay on and protect your foot. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Wow. Imagine trying to go somewhere with a, with a, a loose shoe. It slows you down. It could fall <laughs> off. You could sprain your ankle. You could step on a rock and have to go to the hospital and be late to your appointment. And so this is another point that I'd like to make real quick. Let's establish this. If anything is out of integrity, everything else is in danger of being out of integrity. You got it. Got it. Right. There's a domino effect, a ripple effect. If one thing is out, everything is in danger. Absolutely. Love okay. Very so cool. So now here's the 10 point model and we're going to start with up top is purpose. So I'm going to go fast on this just to get through the model. These are question sets, Adam. What's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of your life? What's the meaning of this business? What's the meaning of this team? What's the meaning of the event? What's the meaning of the podcast? If you don't have an answer for that, what's, what are you doing? It's like the garden hose. You turn it on at the wall and it's spraying water everywhere, but it's not getting anything wet until you point it somewhere. Got it. It's like the foundation, right? You got it. And Simon Sinek would say, start with why. I think it's a good idea. I just call it purpose and meaning, right? Yep. Next is, and, and, do you, and most people, by the way, Adam, remember at the beginning, I said, how many of you have integrity? And you can imagine 99.9% .9 raising their hand right away. Well, what if I asked, how many of you have an answer to what is the meaning of your life? Probably and, much and, less. And, 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 and some would fake it and raise their hand. I said, how many of you could write down the meaning of your life right now and turn it in to me within the next 30 seconds? Do you think 99.9 .9 people would raise their hand? No. Hell the no. number goes way down, but everybody said they have integrity. But just with one, just I'm only on the first point out of 10. And I already know that most people have no, they're being blown around like a feather in the wind. Absolutely. 
Now, most people don't determine their purpose because they're afraid of other purposes that they could, or they don't know how committed, or they don't know if they're worthy to make a difference. There's a lot of reasons that people avoid declaring a life purpose, right? And I can help people with that. I can help individuals, teams, and organizations with purpose of the organization, the team, on and on. But there's reasons. We're not going to get into what prevents people. We just know that people don't have answers to these questions. Yeah. Next. Next is gifts. What are your gifts? Here's the question sets. What gifts did God give you? What gifts are you self-made? Are you integrating what God gave you with self-made? Right? So, Adam, if you think I'm a gifted communicator, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. <laughs> but do you? Of course. Well, guess what? God gave me that, but I went and got a master's degree in communication and 20 years experience as an adjunct professor of communication to integrate God-given with self-made. And now I got a one plus one equals three. But how many people can sing like a bird, but they're waiting tables? Or how many people could be, you know, helping people get to the moon, but they're selling insurance? Not that there's anything wrong with selling insurance, because that's a need. But if you know how to get people to the moon, you should be underwriting insurance rather than selling it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my, I'm talking about competitive advantages. What do you do better than anybody else? What do you do that nobody does? How many people are actually honest with themselves about what their true gifts are and investing in, cultivating, sharing, optimizing, celebrating their gifts? Or how many people are afraid of the work it will take to live up to them? Love it. Very cool. Now, if you don't have a purpose, why don't you study your gifts and then maybe you go back to purpose. And now that you know what your gifts are, maybe you can come up with a purpose, right? Absolutely. But, but you know, if I'm a gifted communicator, Adam, I shouldn't be injecting lab rats with a serum to try to get a drug to market. I should be <laughs> speaking and storytelling and writing books and training. And uh, you follow? If you, you, we want an integration, I want to bring these things together. So if I know my purpose, I know my gifts, then I can declare a potential. How right. many books can I write? How many keynotes can I give? How many teams can I impact? How many businesses can I install a culture of integrity in? How many coaches can I train? How many speakers can I certify? I, I can, how far out can I possibly see? What do I see? And then what's the greatest mission I can achieve, which I want to get one of my missions is get the integrity game book written. And we'll talk about that. But you yeah. understand it's vision, mission, objectives. How far out can you possibly see? What do you see? What's the greatest mission then? Milestone towards that vision. Then what do you need to achieve this year? And then breaking that down into three-month segments, goals. Most people mistake a hope, a wish, or a dream for a goal. So when we work with people on goals, we do smart goal setting. And I added an A and changed the R to the familiar model out there to game change again on goal setting. But this is a three to 12-month you know, chunk of right. what you've imagined in your potential right there, right? This is near term, this is longer term, but there's gotta be an integration. People set goals, but are they integrated with a declared potential? Is the potential mm -hmm. imagined based on gifts and advantages, which are integrated with a purpose? Most right. people won't have answers to all four question sets, let alone answers that integrate with each other. Are you <laughs> with me so far? Absolutely. Okay, moving on. Once you set the goal, then the Brian says, all right, now I know what you want. How are you gonna go get it? So this is the, uh, uh, like an endless sea of strategy, right? There's strategies for everything out there. You've got strategies to be a world-class athlete and train your mind and train your body. You've got strategies for rocking a podcast. Uh, I've got strategies for public speaking. And uh, you know, you, there's anything you want to achieve. Like I love Tony Robbins doesn't spell it with, my, with a K, K-L-U. But, you know, he says success leaves clues. So anything that you want to achieve, somebody's achieved it. And then there's always a smart person, Adam, that says, oh, yeah, well, what if I want to walk on the moon without a <laughs> space suit? <laughs> Nobody's ever achieved that. I said, well, you're, better, you're going to have to learn how to walk on the moon with a space suit before you get there. So why don't you just focus? You know what I mean? Like, great, if you want to do something different, you're still going to have to do what we already know. You know what I'm saying? But yep. a good coach will select a strategy that fits somebody's advantages and their behavioral style, right? There's a lot of coaches out there, Adam, and you know plenty of them that say, I told them what to do. They didn't do it, so I fired them. I fired my client because they're not coachable. It's like, dude, you're not a coach, right? A good coach will figure out why they aren't executing the strategy, get them past that, and then get them into the right strategy for them. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. Somebody, somebody has one strategy and expects everybody a one size fit all, they're a consultant, not a coach. They're a trainer, not a coach. I digress. Are you yep. with me on this? Absolutely. Now, now, now there's equifinality, a big word, but multiple paths to the same destination. So if I'm coaching an introvert in real estate, I'm going to ask yes. them to farm a territory with thousands of pieces of literature and be ready with all of the answers when the phone rings. 
But if I'm coaching an extrovert in real estate, I'm going to coach them to go to the networking events and build business through relationships. Makes Different sense. paths. Does this make yep. sense? So Absolutely. among all the choices that we have on strategy, what do we commit to? What, mm. do we, what do we say we will do? And then do we actually do them? So here's the action and behavior part with the word. So everybody knows we want integration. We want to, you know, when we do what we say we're going to do. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So you're going to say you're going to do sank, but but you, then you need to follow through through action. Well, here's the embarrassing part. Are you ready? Role play this with me, Adam, and come up with a number like say a hundred or something like that. Ready? How many things do we do in a day, Adam? A uh, hundred. Like, like a hundred, right? <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> okay. No, like, but just just understand a hundred. Right. Other than blinking and breathing, let's say you know I checked this email, I went onto this thing, I I, <laughs> sure. I, I, I ate food, I sent a text message, I checked the score of the game, whatever. We do about a hundred things, right? So now at this point in the keynote, I get to get asked of the hundred things that you did, how many of them are things you said you would? Give me what's what in percentage terms, what do you think, Adam? I'd probably say maybe 10% if you're lucky. Okay, maybe 10%. So now we're 90% out of integrity, but we raised our hand right away to say we have integrity. <laughs> Stay with me. Let me ask another question. So watch, of the hundred things we said we'd do, we own of um, of the hundred things we did, we only said we would do 10 of them. But how many things on a day-to-day -day basis do we actually say we'll do, like our own personal to-do list or whatever? How, how many things do we tell ourselves or somebody else will actually do? I know that my right. daily my daily to-do list is between 10 and 20. What about you? Yeah, I, again, it depends on how you operate. But Just give me I, a number to work with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say five. Okay, good. So that's a, that's a better number, by the way. That's a number. I, you know, who cares if you don't get six, seven, eight, nine, ten done as long as you get the five done? But you are a student. You know, in, a, in an example of personal and professional growth, but most people would say, "Oh, my to-do list about five to ten or something like that." My point right. is this, Adam: of all the things you said you would do, let's say it's five. How many of them are tactics of a strategy that was chosen strategically? Yeah, I'd probably say four out of five. Okay, that's you. You're in the, but you're in the top. That's you, me. Yeah, you're a, a world class athlete, and you're trained and disciplined and coached, and you've invested sure. in yourself. And but right, generally, I'd say I'd yep. say less than one. Okay, one. Average right, yeah. So most people say, "Oh, I might to do this about ten things long." I say, "Well, how many of those ten things are proved, are taken from a strategy that was integrated with the goal because of a potential you declared that lets you celebrate rather than suffocate your gifts and live your purpose?" Right. Uh... <laughs> so true. Are you with me? Yeah. And now nobody go. you know this, nobody goes to the gym once and gets a six pack. So we have to keep on taking action over and over again. And so there's no such thing as a mistake, just learning wrapped in a little discomfort. But a lot of people are afraid of taking action because they're afraid of an error or a mistake. And that's a misunderstanding. What I teach is the only mistake to be afraid of is the one you don't learn from. And everything you do, as long as you're taking action towards some purpose, gift, goal, right? You will learn. Right. You, you and you'll learn and you'll grow. Now, you like I said, you don't just take action once and learn one thing. And now I'm done. You right. keep doing that in order to accumulate knowledge, experience and wisdom. And really, the, in the real model, accumulate right here. Uh, when the book comes out and in the model, this is an older version of the PowerPoint. It's going to be accomplishments. Got it. What are your accomplishments? Are I you call wins? Are we calling them wins? Yeah, that's fine. Wins, accomplishments. So, like, did you do you know something? Did you experience something? I have a Kluby snack that says knowledge plus experience equals wisdom, and there's always wealth in the wisdom. But we yeah. don't we don't get wisdom just reading a book. We yeah. actually have to take action and take our lumps and be willing to fail and be vulnerable to get experience. Then we can claim wisdom. Love and it. there's always wealth in the wisdom. Now, imagine that you've accumulated, accumulated, accumulated wealth, wisdom, experience, accomplishments, uh, contacts, podcasts, um, celebrations, awards, d d d wealth. There's only one thing left to do, Adam. What do you think that is? Hmm. That's right. Give back and serve and help other people. And hopefully the, it's time to reintegrate with your purpose and serve the beloved and less fortunate. Like if, if your answer to this question doesn't involve helping somebody else, you... And to me, you're out of integrity because when you get down here, you're going to keep it all to yourself rather than help anybody. So why do any of the nine things here if you're not on the planet to help people? It's the highest level value that we have in our lives is to make a difference for others. But the tough part is actualizing ourselves first so that we get there.
Now I'm going to stop sharing so I can see your beautiful face again, Adam. That's the ten points. <laughs> and so, do you see how I, each ten point is a set of questions? And playing the integrity game is allowing me to hold you accountable to have answers to those questions. Now, let me tell you something else. Um, a year and three months ago, or last September during COVID, my parents passed, both of them, Sorry. within three weeks. Wow. So if somebody said, Jeff, what's your purpose in life? It would be to lay my parents to rest with as much grace as I can. Now ask me, what's my purpose in life? It's to raise the vibrational integrity of the planet. But I always have an answer, even if the answer changes. So if I'm not doing something that is to raise the collective energetic vibrational level of integrity of the planet, I'm out of integrity, given that that's the purpose I declare. So Absolutely. right now, what I'm doing on this podcast is integrating with my purpose. That's good. I love that analogy. And I love the way that you've made it really clear and succinct for people to understand. Because I think that, you know, again... I think you made a great, and, and I love the model. I love the analogy. And for you guys that Thank have, you. that if, if for you guys that have been listening in, by the way, my recommendation right now is to make sure that you have at least gone back about fifteen minutes from where we are right now, <laughs> okay, and listen very attentively and take, given that notebook and pen out and take notes because I can tell you now, I, I, I can tell you now that Jeff has dropped some massive bombshells. And uh, and honestly, it, it's it's absolutely mind blowing. Um, oh, and, I know and, that. And oh, and oh, by the way, if 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 people want to contact me, I'm just going to do this real quick, if I may. Watch Go this, for Adam. It. Go I, for I, it. I, I'm just going to say you said take out. I wouldn't have said this unless you said take out your notebooks and so forth. But I just want to show you real quick on the screen share. Sure. Go ahead. We have an integrity game workbook, right? We have an integrity game workbook where I talk about engagement. And, and motivation and accountability. And we get to the point in the workbook where, look, so if somebody wants this and they want to fill in purpose and gifts and po potential and goals, and then you can see that there's, look, there's a page for each. So they can start to brainstorm. What is my purpose? And then they could say, what are my gifts? And they can say, so I could position people to do the self-paced single player integrity game. If you want to contact me, I can figure out how to get you this workbook, which will facilitate your note taking. It's not a requirement, wow. but I, I want to preview and get a visual out there for people that I want people to imagine me coming into your office, your organization, your boardroom, taking you and your leadership through the integrity game so that you've got real stuff. And when you say you've got integrity, you're not just saying it, you're living it. Absolutely. Love it. Well, that's a great gift, guys. And if, if I was you, I'd be chewing Jeff's arm and getting a uh, uh, messaging him right now. So I just wanted to point that out to you, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we, uh, uh, I'm conscious of time as well. Okay. And, and, I, and I, and I, and I, and I want to make sure that we got uh, a little bit of time to talk about your new up and coming book, which is coming out very, very soon. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, I know that, you know, especially being in the um, personal development world in yeah. particular is now, know that there are some of our listeners that have been to uh, whether it be lectures or uh, events or seminars or whatever it is, or even listening to a podcast or virtual event or whatever it might be, live or otherwise. How do we know, Jeff? And maybe you could give us maybe we maybe you could uh, maybe you could give us a few pointers here because I think that I think that everyone needs uh, everyone needs to sharpen their axe when it comes to this question, right? Yep. So how do we know, especially with all the gurus out there, so self-proclaimed gurus, I'm going to say, uh, but <laughs> some of them are very good, by the way. Um, yeah, I, I'm, a, things... I'm, a, I'm a clue, <laughs> not a guru. <laughs> I love that. Very cool. How do we know that someone is teaching us or selling us, selling, selling to us with integrity versus someone that is just there to try? try to play on people's fears, manipulation. What should we look for? What are some of the clues that we need to look for in terms of someone's behavior? Um, any thoughts there? Yeah, look within. <laughs> look, look within first. This comes back to what we said in the beginning. Most right. people want to blame somebody else for being out of integrity. Isn't that right. a whole lot easier than being in integrity yourself? We are usually guilty of what we are willing to accuse somebody else of. 
Right. It's, better, it's called projecting. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, the person who themselves is out of integrity is going to be quicker to accuse other people of being out before they ever make effort to get themselves in. The blank game. So my point is, if I have answers to all 10 of those questions, yep. I'll know if what they're saying integrates with my answers. And they either integrate with me or they don't. This either, this either helps me get where I want to go or it doesn't. And so then when I'm asking them the questions I need to ask them before I purchase, my questions are my question isn't going to be, how do I know that this is going to work? Mm. Which is what most people ask because they're looking for some silver bullet. Right. And never mind, I'm going to say, well, nothing works unless you do. <laughs> Point taken. Right. But the real answer to the question is I wouldn't, I don't want to say, how am I going, how do I know this will work? I'm going to say, how will this help me integrate these 10 things that I've decided are my model for integrity? Here's my model. Here's, you need to explain to me how that will help me get this. And if you do, I'll buy. So it's not about whether they're out of integrity or not and how they're selling. They have a business to run, it's not for me to judge. True. What for me to judge is, is what am I trying to achieve? And does this integrate? Mm -hmm. Now finish this sentence for me. If we are not growing, we are dying. Aha. Well, I'm here to say this. <laughs> I'm here to say this. If we are not integrating, we are disintegrating. Oh, I like that. I, that. I like that. That's a great analogy. I love that. The steep, well, how did I say it again? I don't say if you're not growing, you're dying. I right. say if you are not integrating, you're disintegrating. Disintegrating. It sounds very Star Trek y like, but I love it. But my so point is you're either together or you're not. You're bringing yeah. things together or you're not. So somebody is making a purchase on is this person ethical? Can I trust this person? They're, ma they're judging something outside of themselves to make a purchasing decision when I'm saying all you need to do is know what you're trying to figure out and help that person explain to you how that will help you get this. And then it's up to you to make it work or not. So sure. I don't mean to apologize for the people that are out of integrity out there, but it's not their fault. They're just running yeah. a business selling what they sell. Yep. And most people buy something they never held accountable to implementing it. And they didn't screen as to why they needed it in the first place. And it's not the organization's fault necessarily. I'm going to tell you this. Here's the example. Henry Ford wants you to buy a car, trick it out, tint the windows, put the rims on, hang the fuzzy dice. The Henry Ford wants you to name your car, wants you to have road trips and experiences and, you know, Right. Henry Ford wants you to do all of that. But Ford Motor Company just wants you to move cars off the line. Absolutely. Okay. I totally get so it. There's a difference <laughs> between somebody like me who's passionate about integrity that wants everybody to play the integrity game at up level. But when I start the business called the integrity game, the business just wants to sell books and sell units. And you know, the business needs to fund itself. Even though I'm passionate, there's a difference. And so we've got to stop blaming these gurus and stop blaming these so-called gurus. It's not their fault. They're trying to make a living just like everybody else. What we need to do is look within and play the, our own integrity game, and then we'll know if we want to buy or not. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I think uh, taking personal responsibility, Yes. Um, which, I, which I think you've highlighted there. Yeah. Uh, but, also, but also, I think it's also around um, making sure that you ha are listening to the right signals, I think yep. is extremely important. And also going with your gut instinct, right? Which I think is extremely important. Listening to the gut, your gut instinct, which again relates back to what we've been talking about, integrity and values, because they all kind of intertwine. They're all correlated. Would you agree? Yeah, I just, and, and to me, it's very similar to hiring and staffing. People right. make staffing mistakes not because the candidates are idiots. It's because they didn't write a good <laughs> position description and didn't ask good interview questions. True, so true. people waste money in personal professional growth not because the guru is a shyster. It's because they didn't know why they were there in the first place. They were looking for some magic bullet rather than being clear about why they're there and using law of attraction to find what they need. Mm, very Does true. this make sense? Absolutely. You know, like, people are like, you know, hoping that they're going to go somewhere and, you know, some magic thing's going to happen, but they're not showing up with integrity. 
Agreed. Agreed. By the way, I just want to give a big shout out to Branka because uh, Branka is a good friend of mine. Hi, Branka. How are you? Uh, we were actually uh, having fun earlier on. We were. We, Branka is going to be coming up on our podcast as well. Uh, she's, we actually already done a, done a show, but if you're listening to this show, then you'll go back to Branka's or whatever it might be. But, <laughs> Hi, so that was kind of cool. Hi, Branka. Uh, <laughs> that's all good. All right, cool. So listen, um, because we're coming towards the end of the show, I'd love to know more about your your new up and coming book, The Integrity yeah. Game. Tell us more about it. When's it coming out? Who's it for, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, well, um, thank you. It's I already told you about it, but here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I'm using the, the, the first book I wrote, um, get a clue in 52. This is like five categories, 10 tips in each. I've been going on zoom Sunday nights and reading one tip from the book and then live streaming it into my channels. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is me originally. I wrote every single word of this. Do you follow the integrity game? I'm working with a writer to like put rings around my Saturn a little bit and give me a framework. So it's a <laughs> business parable. Got you it. Follow? Yeah, and and so what it is is there's a setting, a scene. It's baseball because I'm a baseball. My son plays baseball. I'm a big baseball fan, <laughs> and, and and so what it is is I've created a scenario where there's a baseball team in a stadium, and there's a hot dog vendor, and there's a season <laughs> ticket holder, and there's a rookie, and there's a cotton candy sales vendor, and there's the the hot dog vendor is wasting his life meets the season ticket holder who says, hey, man, you want to learn about integrity? And then basically it's an 11 chapter book. So the first chapter will set up the scene. Yep. And then the other 10 chapters is purpose. It's the 10 chapters I just told you about. So yep, basically yep. we made, I made up a fictitious character story setting so that it's like who moved my cheese or e-myth where you use a parable to teach the business lessons, right? Yep. And so it's a very digestible read. You could get through it in one or two sittings, like an hour or nice. two. And it's just a very simple story that softly and kindly introduces the 10 point model. And so once the book is out, you know, and I've got, I've got trademark protection for the integrity game and all of that stuff. So I'm just slowly starting to, I did the keynote, I've got the PowerPoint, I've done the workshops and now the book, the integrity game is going to be smaller than this book. Right. And uh, it's going to be a very digestible read. And it's going to be something that, if other people out there in the future want to associate with integrity and want to be an author and want to co-author their own version of the integrity game, I just chose baseball. But we could do integrity game realtor, integrity game financial advisor, integrity game banker, integrity game uh, seminar guy. Integ- like We could come up with new stories to highlight the issues in any industry and teach the 10 points on the model. Guys, I think that's like an offer from Jeff there. I don't know if you li- are listening in very attentively, but I think he's just given you an opportunity here. So if you're if you're not already uh, already emailing him right now, <laughs> you are doing yourselves injustice. That's all I'm going to say. Um, when did it come out, by the way, Jeff? Uh, it worked. I'm targeting it. This is the serendipity of it, right? <laughs> Opening day for Opening baseball. Day. Okay. Opening great. day for baseball. What does his season start? is march 31st which is also my son's birthday oh cool that's cool and all three of my children um are represented by certain characters in the book (laughs) i love it it's so so it's part parable it's part personal memoir i told you i lost my parents last year so now i'm gonna have some legacy got it and i'm gonna introduce the integrity game model so i'm integrating a bunch of things here with this project that's cool, man. That's cool. Well, listen, this has been a great conversation. Um, I, I, I think we had a lot of fun. Actually, I thought it was, I thought it was an excellent conversation. I, and for you guys that have been listening in, whether it be live or listen to the pre-recording, I hope that you've been enjoying some of our conversations. And uh, Jeff, just want to say thanks very much for being on the show today. We really appreciate you. Oh, uh, likewise. I'm going to take it a step further. I'll see your appreciation. I'll raise you. I love you, man. Thank you so much Adam, for, for everything that you're doing and bringing good stuff to the world. Thanks for having me on. I, I really appreciate you and love you. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, guys, hope you've enjoyed today's show. Uh, if you have enjoyed today's show and you want to reach out to Jeff, do click on his links on the social media links below and uh, reach out to him. Please do mention the podcast if you do so. And uh, by the way, if you, and also just a one other big ask, if you love what we do here on the show, please do, do us a favor, give us a one or a five star review and you can go onto Apple or whatever your preferred uh, po- uh, podcasting platform. Normally, platform is. Uh, with, if you're on Android, by the way, because normally Android, you can't leave reviews. If you go to podchaser.com, that's pod 
chaser.com. You can leave a review. You can actually download some of the episodes. It's a, it's a great platform to listen to. Um, and it's all good. Listen, hope you enjoyed today's show. From me and Jeff, have a good one. Take care and see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Adam.